The US-20 project is completing a new five and a half mile segment of US-20 in Lincoln County, replacing a 10 mile stretch of old US-20 that had narrow lanes and hairpin curves. The new highway will be straighter with wide shoulders and miles of passing lanes. The project is currently about half paved. Eight project bridges are now completed. The remaining construction focuses on 2.7 miles in the center of the project, where culverts will be constructed at four drainages where bridges had been previously planned. From the early days of construction of the project, landslides in the four drainages at the center of the project have created construction challenges, resulting in delays, work stoppages, and millions of dollars worth of additional engineering and landslide mitigation construction. Well, what we're finding right now is that the groundwater has been a huge factor contributing to the movement of these landslides. And we've found last year that the horizontal drains are real effective at, at removing the groundwater, both from the slide plane and the native material, and also from the embankments that were built in 2008 and 2009. So we installed close to 70 miles worth of horizontal drains last year, and we're installing more this year. I think by the end we'll have probably over 100 miles worth of horizontal drains drilled into the ground. ODOT is engineering a design to complete the project by taking an observational approach to the data that's being collected. The effort is focusing on monitoring and reducing or mitigating the landslide activity and replacing four planned bridges with culverts that the final highway will cross. Altogether, we have over 3,200 feet of culvert. There's four different drainages. Um, we have Eddie C, Eddie B, Crystal, and Cougar. Uh, Crystal Creek is the longest culvert. I think it's over 900 feet long. But between the four, there's about 3,200 feet. Um, it's structural plate pipe. The, the plates come out. There's four plates to make a round, and they're all bolted together. The plate is about half inch thick steel. So they're pretty, pretty significant. They're six and a half foot diameter. They're sized not to be fish passable, but to allow the debris to continue to be able to flow past the project in the creeks. One of the reasons we got away from bridges is because the uh, embankments can, can tolerate a lot more movement than a, a structure can. Water has been a major challenge to the project. Specifically, it's the water under the ground that puts pressure on the fills and the hillsides. So there's several features that, that we've designed to ensure that water stays out of the fills to minimize the slide potential in the fills. And that's in the form of trench drains that are captured in the shallow water before they get to the fills or the roadway area. And those are 10 feet deep by five foot wide. And the idea is they capture the water and direct it directly into one of the pipes that we're installing under this phase. A secondary feature that we've designed is the horizontal drains which are designed to capture the water inside the fills, draw them out to the, to the surface of the fills and direct those directly into the drains as well. And the third, the blanket drains which are designed to, to capture the water and prevent them from going into the fills. From a surface flow standpoint, it directs the water down into the, into the creeks as well, into the pipes. Um, by not allowing the water to infiltrate into the soil. We've had a great success with the horizontal drains to this point. We continue to measure the water with, with weirs, with automated collection systems and, and data systems that we can come in and relate the discharge out of the horizontal drains with rain and water levels within the fill. We have over 100 active borings, and some of, the, some of them have more than one instrument in them. I think we've got close to 180 active instruments that we're currently monitoring. Well, the piezometers just tell us what the groundwater pressure is, um, the level of the groundwater, basically elevation, and the inclinometers measure the pipe that is put into the ground, and after several successive measurements, you can start to see where things have moved so they can compare it over time and see um, how fast and how much the landslide has moved. Future phases of construction will move about two million yards of soil and rock to create the new final alignment. And it will include the final roadway base construction and paving. 
but we'll continue to monitor the site through 2015 and before we make the decision to go ahead and pave it we, we should have a pretty good feel that yeah we've we've we're, we've successfully mitigated the slides and our highway is going to be maintainable the entire project is on schedule to put traffic on the new highway segment in the fall of 2016.